Okay, so welcome back to another episode of Monday Morning Mojo with Anna Gibbs. This is the podcast that will inspire you to think bigger and to really reach past your limitations. And I'm excited today because my guest is someone who uh, I think is passionate about helping other people to step outside of their own limitations and, and to think differently. And I'm joined today by my friend and colleague, Andrew Anderson. Hi, Andrew. Hello, Anna. It's great to be with you. And a big thank you, obviously, to the listener. This is all about them today, right? It is all about them. And I'm excited that you could join me today. So, Andrew, let's just jump right in. Tell us a little bit about yourself. I know that you are a coach. Uh, like myself, you are an NLP practitioner. We might talk a little bit about what that is. Um, and you are an author and a speaker and just someone who really believes in connecting with people to inspire them. So tell us a little bit more about yourself and and we can, you know, jump into some things that you're passionate about from there. Yeah, well, I love when someone comes to me and they're at rope's end and they don't know what's going to break down first, whether it's their business or their life. And when we talk about life, it's their relationship, it's their family, it's their fitness, it's their spirituality. And when that person is at that breaking point, that's where I get to come in and I can say, listen, I know you've talked to other counselors and therapists and coaches and you've been to retreats and you've done the, 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 the classes and you've read the books and all of the stuff. And there's more. There, there's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing that is inherently just not going to work here. And when I come into that, that person who's humble and ready, we're able to experience a breakthrough personally and professionally, they've never been able to experience before. And that's what I love doing as a coach. So that's that's me. That's what I do. That's who I am. I love that you said there's nothing wrong with you. You're not broken because mm -hmm. I think that sometimes people struggle with that and they struggle right. with getting the support or the help they need from a coach or even perhaps a therapist, depending on what uh, is going on in their life, because it's hard to acknowledge that something might be wrong, right? So talk a little bit more about your belief as a coach and, and your your sense of the fact that that person is whole and that they sure. might just need some help figuring it out right now. Yeah, well, I, I love what you said, that something's wrong. Mm -hmm. Most people don't think something's wrong. They think I'm wrong, like there's something wrong with me and that I am broken. and you and I come from a mindset that everybody is, uh, you know, resourceful and they're creative and they are a whole person. And our job is not to fix anyone, but to help them see the resources they have inside of them and around them to get them back to a place of integrity where they are in alignment again, like a chiropractor might do for someone's physical well-being. I love doing that for their mental, emotional, and spiritual well-being. Sure. Yeah, because, you know, it just sometimes we can be a little off and we just need someone to help bring us back to center. And I like the analogy of the chiropractor. Um, how long have you been coaching? So I've been coaching professionally for nine years. And uh, as a, you know, as a leader and a teacher, I've been doing it uh, for my entire career. What inspires you in terms of, you know, working with other people? What inspires you as a coach? What inspires me is seeing them go from a place of absolute and total breakdown, burnout, bankruptcy, wherever that may be. That's where I was when I started this journey a decade ago. And seeing that they don't have to stay in that space any longer than needed. Mm -hmm. And I wish I had had the tools and resources that I now have. I had incredible angels that God sent my way to pull me out, and I wish there had been even more resources. So what inspires me is recognizing they don't have to stay down there in that place of perceived imprisonment any longer than necessary. Yeah, that that's something I talk about a lot here on Mojo, you know, that our circumstances don't need to define us, that what is going on in our life is probably very temporary, and yet mm -hmm. um, we just have to figure it out. And sometimes... It is important to seek out those resources. Sometimes it's important just to listen to your own gut and intuition and be guided by what you know is right for you. Um, how do you know the difference? Like if, if, if you were working with someone, how would you help them understand when it's time to seek um, outside knowledge and outside resources? Because, 
even though I do believe that we all have the ability to guide ourselves, sometimes we operate from a blind spot. Sometimes we may not always ask ourselves the, the, the tough questions. We may be too hard on ourselves or too easy on ourselves. So how do you discern, you know, when it's time to seek that outside perspective? Let's use an analogy. You're in your car, whether it's mud or snow, whatever part of the country that you live in or sand, okay, mud, mm -hmm. snow, sand, you're pushing down on the pedal and the wheels are spinning and all you're doing is flinging mud, snow or sand, and you're not getting traction, you're not moving forward. If someone is putting forth the effort to grow themselves and change their situation and they are working at it and they're not getting anywhere, that's when we need to come out and put the chains on if you're in the snow or figure out another approach. And some people just don't have those chains. And that's what we get to do as coaches. We get to help, you know, strap on some new resources mm -hmm. to get them moving when they weren't able to do so on their own. When we had spoken, um, I guess it was about two weeks ago about you being on the podcast, I wrote something down. It was just a phrase, something that you said. You yeah. said, what we lean into, we learn from. And I think it's actually uh, something that is referenced in, in your book, Strength of, the, yeah. uh, Strength of the Willow. Tell me more about that. Sure. Well, I've often heard it said that what we resist persists. Mm -hmm. And if that's true, then then the opposite is true as well. If what we resist persists, then what we lean into, we learn from. And I believe that we have been conditioned not to lean into things that are painful, whether it's the negative emotions we're holding on to or the limiting beliefs that go through our mind. And yet those limiting beliefs and negative emotions are there to teach us, mm. not to hurt us. Yeah, They're not there to tell us that something's wrong with us, but that there's just something that needs to be aligned, like the chiropractor. The purpose yeah. of our physical pain is to pay attention and change something so we can be in alignment physically. And the purpose of mental, emotional, and spiritual pain is to change something in our thoughts so we can be back in alignment with who we are truly as a spiritual being. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's interesting. I think that a lot of times we work so hard to avoid the pain. Yeah. And, you know, we hear things and read things about stress-free living. And is, is that really the goal or is it to learn how to respond to stress, learn how to manage it, learn how to learn from the opportunities around us, the challenges, the pain, um, so that we can work through it and come out better on the other side of it? Sure. Well, I guess there's two kinds of stress. And uh, there's good stress and bad stress. The good stress is called you stress, EU, like euphoria, right? It's you stress. The bad stress is called distress. So when we think about what's going on in our lives, the question that we can ask ourselves is, is this stress literally breaking me down and tearing me apart? And if that's the case, just like in our physical muscles and we you know, tear a ligament, that's a bad thing. Mm -hmm. But if this stress is just providing micro tears, like when we're exercising and building muscle in our body, then it's happening for us. It's a you stress that's building us up. Mm -hmm. And trees are a perfect example of this. And in my book, I talk about what's called stress wood. And trees have, and you can see this when you, you know, cut into one after it's died, you can see where the wood has been strengthened during times of extreme turbulence. And that turbulence is necessary to build strength to provide longevity for a tree, as are the trials and tribulations we go through in our own lives. It's not happening to us, it's happening for us to create yeah. new strengths and you know things that we need so we can serve and help others through the, the storms as well. I totally believe that to be true. I was gonna ask you to elaborate on the significance of the oak and the willow trees that you write about in, in the context of your book. So tell us more about that. Yeah, I had a great coach one day that said to me, Andrew, you have incredible oak-like strength. And I said, "What? Well, I don't know what that means. Like, teach me, enlighten me. He said, you are committed. You are strong. You know what you want. You seem to know how to get it. And you don't back down like the oak. It's such a strong wood. It lives for such a long time. He said, there's another strength, not a competing, but a a complementary strength, which is the strength of the willow. And the strength of the willow knows how to bend without breaking. 
And when it does lose some branches, the branches go right in the ground and they spring forth new trees. And you can bring some compassion to yourself and others, some humility, some grace, along with that courage and that undaunted um, strength that you have that the oak provides. What was your inspiration for writing the book? My inspiration was revelation. Uh I had sworn off writing completely after I finished my master's degree 10 years ago, like (laughs) 100%. That's a lot of work, a master's degree. (laughs) Yeah. I said, I'm never writing anything ever again. I mean, it's hard to even write in my own journal. Mm -hmm. And when I say revelation, I truly mean that it was a calling from God as I was standing in the Virgin River and uh, Zion National Park. You've been. In fact, you I may have, have even. You, we may have been there at the same time. I think this we was, were. We were there. Uh, we're talking yeah. about a Genshai retreat with Kevin Hall right. and some other amazing people. Probably two years ago. Yeah, the, this one specifically. Um, it was right before the worldwide pandemic, mm-hmm. so it was 2020. Oh, and I'm standing in Zion National Park. I'm looking up at this red rock. And I'm having this moment where I just feel its magnificence and the grandeur. And I'd never actually been to that location before. And I felt so moved by nature that I I shed a tear. And as I was having this moment, the words came into my mind, Andrew, that is a rock. And you are my son. Imagine what others will experience when you fulfill the measure of your creation. And that one tear now was just flowing. Mm -hmm. And I was like having this moment. And as I was just taking all that in, the words, strength of the oak, strength of the willow, came to my mind. And I knew that it was a book that needed to be written. I didn't know what it was going to be about or how I was going to do it. But it was revelation. I was called. I love that. So what do you hope people get from the book itself? I mean, everyone will have their own experience and will take from the book what they need at that time. However, if you could sum it up, what what do you hope people walk away in terms of knowledge or insight after reading your book? Sure. There, There are so many things in here that are very meaningful to me and to the clients that I get to serve. And if there was just one, just one thing that I would hope would get them to start reading and then to be able to carry forth the rest of their life is that just like an oak tree, you have a purpose. And an oak tree, if I can share a little bit about its uh, its nature, before it ever sends out horizontal roots or even upward shoots, it sends a vertical root down straight to a source of water. And once it's connected to that source of water, it never leaves. And it's able to draw from that for its entire life. And you have a source, a life-giving purpose. And whether that's inside you as your soul, whether you look outside you towards God or the universe, there is something there that is ready and willing and waiting, a mission, I call in my book, a life mission for you to ground yourself to so that you can be able to grow as grand as, as an oak tree and be able to live as long as possible, finding that fulfillment that you desire. It's in you. And we just got to figure out how to find it. I love that, the metaphor of the oak. So what would you say to someone who might be listening and is is really intrigued by this and excited to hear this and, and says, okay, so what do I do how do I even start to figure out what my life purpose is? What what kind of guidance would you give someone who might have those questions? Sure. Well, I have five questions for them. Okay. And we can go through each one really quickly. And you can stop me and we can chat if you want. But the first question is, who do you believe you were called to serve? And we are not here to make it through this life independently. We are created to be interdependent Mm. to serve each other and as soon as you can identify who it is that you are called to serve the better off you will be in finding that life mission i love that so i talk about that a lot here too on mojo that it is about the human experience the connections we make 
how we support each other, how we give and learn. And it's, it is really about coming from contribution. So the first question is, who do I want to serve? I love that. That's right. And, and one, one way, way to help you answer that is to recognize that you are probably best positioned to serve the person that you once were at one point in your life, whether as a child or an adolescent or a young adult, or when you were at the deepest, darkest place in your life. Chapter one of my book starts out with me living in my parents' basement, having gone through a separation that turned into a divorce, losing my career and believing that I had failed in everything God wanted me to accomplish in my life. And so this book is actually written to that version of myself. So as you discover what you have been through and who you can best serve, you will have your eyes opened and see those that are waiting and ready and, and willing and asking and pleading and maybe even praying for you to help them. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, what's the second question? Okay, number two, what unique gifts do you have to offer that they so desperately need? And a lot of people say, I don't have any unique gifts, Andrew, I'm just a, and then they fill it in, I'm just a mom, I'm just a realtor, I'm just a whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And yet your unique ability to serve those that you are called to serve is not necessarily some crazy skill base that you have but it's you being there for them and listening and sharing and being able to compassionately show up and serve and pour into them just by being there or not that's enough yeah. and you know, just be you and I, you know i believe that we we don't always know the impact we make in other people's lives right it becomes this ripple effect that goes out so whether yeah. it is something you know as dynamic as as working within an organization or helping people in their career or vocation or it's just a a word of encouragement or your your supportive presence that can create a ripple effect and be a conduit to what other people can accomplish in life as well which really is is a, an amazing part of who you are in this world yes it is most definitely is so you know who you're meant to serve, you know your unique gifts that you have to offer. Question number three is what's so important to you mm. about serving that group with your gifts? And when we can connect to that purpose, that why, we no longer have to have willpower to accomplish things. We have why power. We have purposeful power behind it. And some might say, because I stood in the Virgin River in Zion National Park and God told me to, right? Or they may say, because I never had that in my life. And when you have that why, and you know what's so important to you, then you will never be forced to work another day again in your life. Mm -hmm. You will be in a state of flow, a force of nature, Let, rather than having to force something that's not natural. Absolutely. So let's just pause here for one second, because I think that you and I talk about a big why and and we sure. really understand what that is for the listener who may not really get that talk a little bit more about the big why what it is and the significance of this in everything that you're sharing here on, sure. on today's episode we're we're talking about it right now a life mission with these answers to the five questions is a big why mm. so let me break down nine for you I know that my life mission is to bless my brothers and sisters who I believe to be God's children. That's all of them. Mm -hmm. So I know who I'm called to serve. Okay. So number one, that's it. And what unique gifts do I bring? It's to influence as many as possible in my writing, in my speaking and my coaching. And then why? Because I believe that this is what God has asked me to do personally. And then question number four then is what does that do for you? And when I am living my life mission, when someone is truly in alignment with that purpose, it lights you up. It brings joy. There are days that I finish a call or I'm with someone in my office and they walk out and I jump up in the air and I give a fist pump. Like I want to celebrate. Or sometimes it's so overwhelming that I get to serve them in this way that like it might bring me to tears. When you recognize that what you're doing is moving your soul and there's no stopping you, then you know you're on path. And as Kevin Hall says, you're on purpose, right? Mm -hmm. On path and on purpose. 
So you take all four of those questions. Who am I called to serve? What unique gifts do I have to offer that they so desperately need? And what is so important to me about that? And what does that do for me? It answers that fifth question, which is, so why are you here? And you string all those together like I have done. You have a life mission statement, which is your big why. Love it. So I hope that um, some of you listening today will spend some time thinking about that and, and you know, maybe even journaling on it. And um, we'll have those uh, questions in the show notes, too, so that others can really focus on it. Um, Back to to your book for a minute. I was you touched on something, um, a personal life experience, and how you talk about that in chapter one. Um, so, w- would you say that that moment began? I mean, you probably did not. I, I'm assuming did not know it at that time because usually mm-hmm. when we're in, in a low time in our lives, it's hard to see out of it for that moment. But looking back on it now, would you say that that was one of your most trans transformative times in your life or you know what what now looking back on it what have you learned about yourself as you've gone through so much adversity yeah it was definitely one of the most transformative experiences of my life and what i've learned is that no one else in this world is like me i I used to think that everybody thought the way i did they had the same values and um i i now recognize that for a lot of my life, I felt called to serve others as a leader and a coach through my speaking and my ability to work one-on-one. And that was so strong in me that I never wanted it to be something that would get in the way of me helping someone. Mm. And I hid behind it and I pretended. And I didn't want to use this superpower that God had blessed me with And so he put me in this super humbling state. And what I learned about myself, Anna, that I never knew was that I have a resiliency and a persistence to never quit or give up on myself that I had been doing for others. And when I took a stand for myself, it empowered me to be able to do so for others and teach them how to do it for themselves as well, rather than being reliant upon me as their coach Mm. to do it for them. Yeah. That's what I did. That's what I didn't know I had. That that could be a whole other topic, right? For another conversation. I think um, I I've struggled with this myself. For those of us who do feel called to you know give to others, support others, teach, coach, guide. I mean, we all do that in our own ways. Yeah. But when we really choose that to be our our mission or purpose in life, um, mm-hmm. we can get a little lost in the process, and, and sometimes. Um, struggle with either imposter syndrome, which I think you might have touched on there, or just, you know, where do we fit in terms of priority when you're always giving to others? How do you make sure that you also are are putting yourself first? Do you, do you struggle with that? Or have you learned to, to balance oh, that yeah. more? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, the, uh, your readers, when they are able to dive into my book, they're, they're going to hear, they're going to hear some stories about how even after I got out of my parents' basement and I was succeeding in the coaching world and that, that, that was a struggle for me. And it's actually the last of what I call the seven deadly sins that break down burnout and bankrupt real estate agents specifically. And number seven is cheating on yourself mm-hmm. by getting in bed with your business. Tell us and, more about that. That's so intriguing yeah. the way you, you put that. Yeah. So we, we forget why we got into the business in the first place, which usually was from a place of one of the F's. We felt we needed freedom, Mm -hmm. we needed flexibility or more finances, but it was from a place of a a servant heart, of course. And when we forget that that servant heart was about, you know, building our freedom and our flexibility and, you know, really truly providing in a way that we weren't able to before, then we lose that identity. And we get so wrapped up in the business of our business that we forget about how it was that we got into it in the first place. And when we can pour back into ourselves and begin to take care of the golden goose, right? As Stephen Covey teaches in Seven Habits, when we can take care of that golden goose and pour into ourselves, then there's always more to give others. And we're no longer cheating on ourselves and we can get out of bed with business and 
just be grateful that we we have it as a, a companion for our life rather than it being all of our life. For sure. Everything works better when you plug it back in, right? So taking care of the golden goose isn't selfish. It's really about preserving energy and you know, being able to to recharge the battery so you can give yep. more and you can be open to receive more too. Um, you know, because I'm sure you are and, and I have a lot in common in terms of we're always reading and listening and and taking in information that we are able to use then to help someone else. Um, but if we don't balance mm-hmm. that out with a little um, us time, relaxation, spiritual rejuvenation, right? Physical rejuvenation. It just depletes us and it's hard to stay open-minded and receive all of the things we need in order to give back yeah. to others, right? Right. And if we are an entrepreneur or a business person, and or even if we have a job, we, we work at a job where someone owns the business and there's a business plan. Right. And we are masters at coaches of helping people build out business plans. That's what we do. And in my book, I teach you how to build out a personal one page plan for your life. And that was something that really was a turning point for me was making myself a priority and just as important as was my business Mm -hmm. and recognizing that my business really would only grow right to the extent that I was growing myself. And everyone needs a personal plan. You need to start a business today and we need to call it Anna Incorporated Mm -hmm. or Ander Incorporated, whatever your name is. And we need to have a plan to grow that personal business. Yeah. So on the subject of um, purpose and mission, um, Mm -hmm. I think I tend to attract people. This audience is, is seeking, I think, growth and they're seeking opportunity and they might chalk it up to motivation. Sure. Um, yet motivation is fleeting. And, and so let's talk about that for a minute because I think that this will be surprising for some people to, li- to hear today. Uh, is it really about motivation or is it something else? Well, it is. And we, we're going to do some etymology. I'm a word nerd. And etymology is the study of language. And when you look at the root word of um, motivation, it comes from the, the Latin word movere. And that means to make move. And if you think about it, nothing truly makes you move outside of yourself. It's always an inward decision. Mm. And when you are connected internally to a life mission, you're grounded to that purpose. And you know who you're serving, what you're serving them with, what's so important to you about and what that does for you, then that internal motivation moves you. And nothing ever externally has to be a, a motivation. And so we just have to get people plugged, as you said earlier, plugged back in, mm-hmm. connected to that source. And once connected to the source, you never look at any piece of electronics around you. I mean, and say, wow, what's motivating that thing to shine or to, you know, power uh, like it, that's what it was built for. And that's what you were built for. You don't need to be motivated. You need to get plugged in to that source, that life mission. Yeah. Thank you for that. So Andrew, what other projects are you working on? Tell us some other things that might be going on in your career and your life. Right. So I hate to call it a project. And yet, uh, first and foremost, I am a husband of one and a father of seven. So I thought it was only six. So that surprised me. Okay. Well, we had a baby. We had a baby in March. So congratulations. uh, Wow. Yeah. So so that's not a project, but it certainly uh, will never, I, I never want to allow what I do professionally to get in the way of what I'm doing at home. So, so let me that's just pause always, you right there. What are the challenges of having such a big family? I'm sure that can't be easy all the time. As blessed oh, as I'm are, sure you feel. How what old are, are the your cha- children? <laughs> what are the challenges? Like we need to shoot another time? show, Anna. <laughs> we need to do another show. Um, my children range from 15 down to five months. Wow. So, uh, you know, the, the, the only challenges, honestly, from parenting for 15 years and having seven children, the the only thing I know for sure is that I'm the only thing that gets in the way. Mm -hmm. And when I can let go of my pride and my ego, when I can stop wanting to serve myself and I can see them like I do my clients, which is the children of God that they are. And I can see that greatness inside them and I can start to identify who they're going to be called to serve and what unique gifts they have to offer and what's so important. When I can truly see in them what I see in my clients, 
then it gets a lot easier. And I just forget that way too often. So thank you for reminding me today because I needed to hear that as much as anyone else. Well, that was very beautifully said. Yeah. So, so what am I working on project-wise? Yes, yeah, so you've got a great family. Building a family. And- yeah, building a family. I'm continuing to speak across the country and share um, what I do with my one-on-one coaching clients. And then I have a passion project, which I might call my second calling that I've felt like I need to build. And that is a nonprofit coaching foundation providing all things coaching to young adults. And when I die, it won't say coach, it won't say author, it won't say speaker on my tombstone. Um, I don't want to be remembered by any of those things. What I want to be remembered is uh, by the legacy that I left through that coaching foundation for the next generation. That's beautiful. So if you could sum up, what is the mission of that foundation? Yeah, the mission of that foundation is provide the life skills and resources to connect young adults with who they know they need to be for their future. I love it. I love it. You know, I've said oftentimes if we could have taken the things that we've learned as an adult and through all the money we've invested in time, we've invested for our education, coaching and Mm -hmm. and support. If we learn that as a young person, um, you know, what, what would our lives look like? And um, if our adolescence, uh, you know, was really about, looking within and and figuring out how to be the best version of ourselves at a much younger age. Um, I think that the path might have been different. So I love that you're giving young people that opportunity to really, you know, I think tap into and understand more about their own strengths and diversity and uniqueness and how to use their gifts and how to probably feel more comfortable in their own skin and authentic rather than worrying about what life or the world is trying to define for them. Absolutely. I am feeling like I need to share a word of caution with your, with your listeners. Would that be okay? Anna? Yeah, sure. It's very easy for myself to listen to someone on a podcast that seems to be like the, a profession, you know, professional on the top of their field to start comparing mm-hmm. and comparison is the second of my seven deadly sins. Mm-hmm. Um, I want you to know that you don't have to wait until you have a call to write a book or start a nonprofit foundation. That's right. Let me tell you how this nonprofit foundation started. It started with one client saying, would you be willing to talk to my 19 year old son? He just got a DUI and he uh, doesn't believe that he's going to be able to you know, move forward with his life like he thought he was. And I said, sure. And that turned into a, a one and a half year coaching. I just, Coached him for free for for a year and a half. And then I just kept saying yes. And people said, can you coach my son? Can you coach my grandchild? Can you coach my brother? And and I just, after doing this for about four years, I just had this aha. I'm like, wait, when I want to give back, it's usually not building schools in Africa or feeding, you know, like I think those are all great things. But what I'm passionate about is sharing this coaching opportunity with this generation. And then I wasn't standing in a river and heard this voice from the heavens above it. It just like clicked. It just made sense. I'm like, why are you not doing this? I love that you said that because, you know, I totally respect that moment you had at Zion Park. But you know, someone's listening to that saying, all right, dude, I, I don't I don't have those moments. Right. And it's because it might be because they're so busy just doing life that they're not even listening or paying attention or Whatever the reason is, and I think you bring up a good point, and I remember hearing Oprah Winfrey say this 20 years ago, that, you know, she was able to create a life that was, you know, about inspiring and educating other people, but you don't need a TV show and a platform with a million viewers to do the same thing. That That's that ripple effect I was talking about a little while ago, that, that one word of encouragement, that idea that you share, that conversation might be what spurred something in someone else and they went on to create you know positive change and we all have the ability to do big things um in our own small way that's right so if if the listener were going to just take away one thing from today it wouldn't be anything that i said or that you said it wouldn't be even anything that they felt it would be this i want you to literally pause this recording 
I want you to push pause and I want you to go serve someone. I want you to look at your phone and see who's been texting or calling you or email or look at your neighbor or look at inside your home. Look across the street. I want you to go and serve that person because if you're struggling to know who you're best called to serve in this world or what your life mission is or your purpose and passion or foundation or book, like it's all baloney. You don't need that motivation. You need to pause this right now. You go serve someone and you'll find that purpose and that person and that skill set and that opportunity that you have to live your life mission. Go serve someone. It's beautiful. I love it. So Andrew, when uh, anyone in my audience wants a little bit more Andrew Anderson, how can they find you? <laughs> well, they're already going to the internet and they're going to Facebook and they're going to Amazon and they're, you know, you, your people are smart. They can find the book <laughs> right on Amazon. It's strength of the Oak, strength of the willow. And then you can follow me on social media. My name is Andrew L. Anderson. And uh, it's just a, it's a privilege to be with your people. And I trust that as they felt served by us today that they can take that forward and go serve someone else. Oh, I love it. Thank you so much for being with us today. It was really a pleasure. You're very welcome. And one last thing that I would love to do with your permission, Anna, is if someone feels like they need to go a little bit deeper, uh, I wish I could do this with all of your listeners. And yet I'm willing to open up. I do about two to three podcasts each week. So my calendar will allow for me to offer the first three listeners that go to freecall.andrewlanderson.com. And I know you'll put that in the notes, but it's freecall.andrewlanderson.com. The first three people to do that, I will spend 30 minutes with them in a strategy session, whether it's business or life, to help them move themselves forward. And that's just a, a very simple way I can give back to your listeners for having spent the time with us today. That's awesome. Thank you for that, Andrew. Well, again, Andrew Anderson, uh, pleasure to talk to you. I wish we had more time, um, but we can always pick this up another time and have you back again. Thanks again for joining us. You're welcome. Thank you for all you're doing. Appreciate Thank you, Anna. Thank you so much.